Uh, Christine has published hundreds of poems in journals such as Avocet, Beloit Poetry Journal, Louisville Review, Spoon River Quarterly, and June Cotner Anthologies. Earth Blessings, Garden Blessings, Gratitude Prayers, and Back to Joy. Her collections include Tonight on This Late Road from Erie Street in 1984, Invisible String, also from Erie Street in 1989, Slow Miracle from Lake Shore Press in 1990, Bread Upon the Waters, Waterfall Prophets at UW 1991, The Tenderness of Memory from Plain View in 1995, The Red Lacquer Room from Chiron in 2000, and Who Walks Among the Trees with Charity from Wind Press in 2005. The Alleluia Tree, Puddenhead Press in 2012, and her newest, Wild Fruition, Sonnets, Spells, and Other Incantations, also from Puddenhead Press in 2017. Okay, that's a lot of publication. Interviewed in Poets Market, she has won awards for Community Impact, the YWCA Award for the Arts, and the Women's Spirit Award. She was recently appointed the first Poet Laureate of Rockford, Illinois. So congratulations and welcome, Chris. Uh, can you hear me? Um, I'm not muted. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, it looked like everybody couldn't hear me. Okay. Oh, I'm just delighted to be here. And um, I do have a very strong Wisconsin connection. Um, I was raised in Wisconsin on a little lake outside of Whitewater and have um, gone to Door County ever since I can ever remember for at least 50 years. And yes, um, thank you for the wonderful introduction. If, if there's anything I would say about how I survive in this world is that I persevere. I've, I'm in my 70s and I've been writing for 50 years and I just never stop. So that's, that's why I have so many things published. So I'm going to read from the newest book, the newest collection out from uh, Puddinghead Press. And the collection is put together and um, I would call them, I guess you could call them chapters. And I'm going to read a couple selections from each of the so-called chapters to give you kind of the flow of the book and how it, how it goes. So in the first chapter, it's called Your Great Adventure. Um, and, and I love adventures. I, I love going all over the place. And when I wrote this poem, Something So New, it's called, it never occurred to me that I would spend an entire year in my house. And so I think this is a really good poem to start with. Something So New. I want something so new. A red door opening to a bright, empty room filled with sun. A window framing a stunning new vista, shimmering with adventure. Perhaps a sea with its waves that roar with promise. Or a mountain across a still bay, glimmering with snow, as fresh as new beginnings. I want something so new. A bright, empty room to stock with vintage pillows and a sofa for huddling and cuddling, the old cat who will have to learn a new routine too, new places to stroll, new faces to explore, the possibility of unexpected friends like a slew of gliding pelicans. I want something so new that it sweeps me away, electrifies each sense, the possibility of being thrilled or challenged like a heron finding fish in a new pond, the lure of music yet unsung, dances not yet danced, the baggage left behind, the chance of reinvention. And in this chapter, I, I was delighted that you mentioned uh, the Sandhill Crane returning to the Fox River because this poem actually is set on the Mississippi River and it has eagles in it too. So this is called Great River Road. Driving north in Iowa, the Great River Road before us, the March thaw sprinkling sunlight 
on blue icy patches of river. We pass bridges and dams where eagles spend the winter fishing. Their huge nest rests in treetops that line the river's edge. Silver glints of river carp and beaks catch the sun's wink as the eagles carry on. When you think of resolution, how your life will fledge and wing despite its threat of extinction, or conflicts reaped upon the unsuspecting earth, think about the eagles who survived, their perseverance even in ill-advised slaughter, how they rose against the odds, catch fish as seasons turn. Think of the Mississippi River, its pilgrims and refugees on barges and boats, the current that leads on to a distant place, the promise of new life. Driving closer to Dubuque, we watch the hills grow jagged, past towns with names like Luxembourg, sheep peaceful on rocky hills, that first spring green promise now springing forth. I don't know about you all, because I'm really afraid of getting COVID. I live with high risk people and I'm kind of an old person myself. Uh, so I haven't done much traveling and I really miss it. So I want to read a poem set far away. And this is called What Sedona Says. And um, the, the book is um, Sonnet Spells and Other Incantations. Not all of the poems are sonnets, but I sort of rediscovered the sonnet and um, learned that it has its pleasures and its confinements that are actually sort of freeing in some ways. So this is a sonnet triptych. It's a, a, a series of three sonnets that I think um, celebrates just the way I felt in Sedona, Arizona. A rainbow slivers over Cathedral Rock here in Sedona, where molecules skin, buzz up your spine, tingle your scalp and knock at the portal of your third eye. Within each breath you take upon this vortex, the meditations amidst red towers cleanse and sharpen your cerebral cortex. Then you might decide to pass the hours communing with the great benevolence. And if the ghost of Edward Abbey flies as a vulture, or if you have the sense that a restless spirit from Jerome cries in the lightning of an afternoon monsoon. Breathe in, be one with each sacred rune. With each sacred rune and cave dwelling, with each red spiral and divine design, with each hovering rock and cloud swelling, with every desolate abandoned mine, with every crystal misguided or not, with every hummingbird and mountain quail, with the rattlesnake tied neatly in a knot, I'm the cactus and the winds wail over spires through never ending canyons, along green rivers winding and sagebrush rippling by its side, sweet smell of pinions high upon the great red rocks, the green lush surprise near the rim of clouds, then the sun like a thousand painted ponies on the run. Like a thousand painted points, sunset thundered through the ever-changing sky. The wind rocked spirits in the rain all met that night, just beneath the moon's cat's eye. Here is what the wind said. Keep moving. The great rock shouted, there's always more. And the dime store psychic said, keep grooving. And the rain whispered, don't close the store. They called to the secret shaman, that lives within your heart, the one who remembers the soul of every living thing, who gives the earth its secret space, who numbers herself among the little lizard, desert doves, among every creature that she loves. And I was so pleased that um, you posted this poem uh, at, the, at the Sacred Cliffs of Kauai. And again, um, it never occurred to me how much grief one year could bring. Uh, it wasn't just um, COVID, it was so many other things and so much collateral damage and so much personal sorrow 
as I'm sure many of you also experienced. So when I read this poem now, it has a completely different meaning to me. It's called At the Sacred Cliffs of Kauai. No matter how wide nor deep today's grief, remember, the world is wider and deeper. When you feel it shrinking, no, new earth still forms, volcanic fire on the sea. There may come a time when things won't get better, but not today with its cleansing rain, its hope of rainbows, its change of plans. Even the planets retrograde and don't fall from their orbits. In a million years, the Nepal eclipse will be nothing but a coral reef. But see how they do nothing to speed their erosion? You're like that. Stand hard in your grief and let elements pound your ribs, carve out something solid, a jagged beauty unsurpassed, pierced and pointing to the sacred. So now um, in the second part of the book, it's called a dark thread. Um, I'm just not one of those lucky people that I'm happy all the time. I wish I was, but I'm not. And things bother me. And so this little poem, which keeps getting picked up all over the place, I don't know why, it's called Blue Jinxed. And it's a, it's a little sonnet about a day that we were jinxed. Suppose one day long past your prime, you made a poor judgment regarding laundry. Mixed vintage tablecloths and hot water, you paid the price with all the backgrounds, blue jinxed. Suppose you pulled each precious piece to find them all a little blue, beige to baby blue, red to lavender, and then the day you find itself in blue, emails stuck in cyber glue, the phone call that jarred your mood, the invoice incorrectly calculated, the friend's unexpected lecture, the needling choice to respond or not when something dear ends. On those days when blue prevails from the start, there's not much you can do but guard your heart. And so the third little chapter is called Winter Spell for obvious reasons. Uh, even though I live in Northern Illinois, we get it bad here too. Uh, the winter is a long, long season. And I find winter comes up quite a bit in my work because I'm stuck inside writing. Whereas I'd be outside in the garden or swimming or walking in the nice weather. So this is a playful poem called Snow Salsa. Um, about deciding how to get exercise when you're maybe not like really into going to places where they tell you what to do. So this is called Snow Salsa. Dancing with the wind, slanted snow swivels, salsa slashing the windows, was snowed in. A corner icicle hangs and dribbles like an intravenous glucose machine. I put on tropicalis and dance too, a solo sequestered salsa of sorts, a solitary rendezvous, not blue. Midwesterners must always be good sports. When winter comes conquering and calling, we dance and read, watch old movies, maybe paint a closet or polish brass. Befalling all it can befall, snow on limb of tree. Stay in salsa a day, you sway in snow. Just a day, okay? Then you have to go. And the fourth little chapter is called Ask the Gardener. Um, and uh, I, I, I kind of live for my garden. It's, a, it's just a place of sanctuary. And I find that, you know, they know when you love them, the creatures, they know. So this is called Hummingbird Whisperer. Glory be to the fierce little warriors who return to my garden each year. Come, enjoy, drink the various nectars, tiny gold ones, you without any fear. Teach me to cultivate fervor and focus. Stay in our shared sacred sanctuary created for you with bergamot and flocks, fuchsia 
and the feeder hung on the tree you visit each morning. Hello, goodbye. Who could be freer? Fast as a torpedo when I'm digging, spading, you catch my eye. Faster than the wind glanced by my window, you share delight with your earthbound sister. You've made me a hummingbird whisperer. In the last chapter, um, I'm going to read uh, two poems, and that will be it. Um, I always like to read the first poem I ever had published. It appears in, I think, all of my books. Um, I was a public school teacher most of my life. It was hard work. I worked in a um, kind of a ghetto school. Rockford schools kind of became that way. Um, and I decided that I should become a massage therapist. So I started taking some massage classes and having massages and I decided, you know what, I didn't like that at all. What I really wanted was to have a massage. So I had a massage and I wrote this poem to the masseur that gave me this incredible massage. And he loved it and he said, you know, Christine, and this was like 30, 40 years ago, you really ought to send that poem to American Massage Journal. So I did, and it was the first poem I ever had published, years and years ago, and here it is. You have turned my toes to velvet mushrooms, my arches to cotton, the balls of my feet to Indian drums, my heels to onyx, my ankles to pigeon feet, my calves to oranges, the back of my knees to creeks, my thighs to bread dough, my lumber to, doze, uh, to stars, my spine to piano keys, my shoulder blades to foothills, my shoulders to satin ribbon, the crimp of my neck to root, my neck to stem, my head to dandelion, my hair to fluff, scattered in the eucalyptus wind. And I'm going to end with the last poem in the book. Um, I like to think that the, the the uh, collection has some sort of movement to this. And it's called the benevolence. Believe in the benevolence of bees and bergamot beckoning hummingbirds. Hail the tiny ones who sail thousands of treacherous miles to return to us each year. Rely on the wisdom of crows who congregate on catalpa trees for their alarms are righteous. Shout amen to each alleluia tree and branches bearing fruit, turning leaves, holding nests. Give thanks to the rain and the sun that dance in contrapuntal perfection, their never ending feud. Bless each ladybug and firefly, who without them summer would hold less magic in the Midwest. Glory be to the swallowtail and monarch and every short but mysterious life. All gratitude to the gardeners, great and small, the cultivators and creators here and above. And let us never forget the wind, great breath of life. Oh, what benevolence bestowed on us each day, given to us without expectation of pay. <laughs>